All right, as background, Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. UEFI is a firmware interface specification predominantly, but not exclusively used on Intel-based platforms. It also sees some usage on mobile phones as well, and a few you know, embedded systems and stuff like that. So EFI Development Kit 2, or EDK2, is an open source reference implementation for UEFI firmware that is often used as the base from which other implementations are derived. So because this particular bug was found in the EDK2 source, that means it ended up spreading to a whole bunch of other vendors' implementations. Now, UEFI has the notion of non-volatile variables, or NVVARs, and they're stored typically on a serial peripheral interface, or SPI flash chip. So NVRAM could be used exclusively by firmware, but it can also be used by the operating system to configure information or for sharing stuff between the OS and the firmware. UEFI has the concept of the firmware leaving some code available for the operating system so that it can write NVVARs at runtime if it would like. And the thing about NVVARs is that even if they are ostensibly for firmware-only usage, if an attacker completely compromises the kernel or if they have physical access to a system, they can manipulate and modify all NVRAM variables to be whatever they want them to be. Consequently, any firmware that handles NVVARs should always treat it as fully attacker controlled. So for instance, if we had an eight megabyte flash chip, it's typically going to be composed of some amount of UEFI code and data that is integrity checkable and unchanging, and some code and data down here, but there's always going to be some region storing those NVVARs. And generally, if something like a user space application wants to read and write the NVVARs, the operating system may or may not allow it, but if it allows it, you're typically going to have a user space library interface to get variable, followed by a kernel interface, and then you may have some runtime code that was left around and reused by the kernel because it knows how this NVVARs are actually structured and formatted because you can have slightly different formatting depending on the system. And the ultimate goal of a thing like a get variable function that's available at runtime is to copy things from the non-volatile memory into the runtime memory like the heap for usage by the firmware. All right, with all that said, here is the code. You're gonna go check out the website. I've provided some details about things that are just you know non-attacker controlled like this. Um, Firmware Performance GUID. GUID is a global unique identifier, and this is not under attacker control. But other than that, go read the code.